All right, and this we're going to look at setting up a previs in Unreal Engine. So using the Unreal Engine in real time to previs your VJ or your stage setup. So I've set up a basic resume here with a um, pretty generic stage setup, some strips, this DJ booth, and a screen here. I've got a previous video on building this in 3D in Blender and doing the mapping, but I'll get to that later. So first of all, jumping into Unreal, I just want to start a new project. So I'm going to do a film television. This isn't particularly crucial, but it's what I've been using for a lot of my stuff, so I'll stick with that for now. Um, just a blank scene, so I'll click Next on that. Uh, I don't need any of the starter content, I don't need ray tracing for this one. So, previous, I'll create the project, so all right, so here's my project. There's not much happening here right now. So first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get it connected to Resolume. So I wanna make sure I'm getting my content from Resolume in here. And there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, you could use a capture card directly. Um, NDI will mean you've got it over the network and NDI definitely has lots of benefits. Or there's Spout and Spout is very easy because it works on the same machine and it's a pretty clean connection. So I'm gonna set up Spout for you here. Now, so I've used a plugin um, from the Unreal Marketplace. I've got Resolume set up, outputting this, so screen one, make sure it's outputting as a spout send there. Save and close, and I can see it's coming in down here as a spout signal, so it's definitely working on the computer. I'll show you the plugin I've run. So this one here, open world, bi-directional spout plugin. So this actually lets you even send spout from Unreal Engine. But this is what I've got set up, so I've got this one installed to my engine already. I just need to activate it in my project. So edit plugins. I'll just do a search up here for Spout. And there it is, off world live streaming cameras. Enable it, I'll need to do a restart to activate that. All right, so it won't look any different, but if I do a search, you'll see that plugin is activated, enabled, and I now have the option to add it into the scene. So over on the left-hand side here, I've got my actors. And if I do a search for Spout, there is my Spout receiver actor. So an actor is kind of bringing content into the scene. So I just need to bring in this actor into my viewport to make sure it's part of the project. It'll show up in the world outliner over here, OWL Spout Receiver 1. So that's my receiver. And then now I have these options down here. Uh, so first of all, I need to make sure my receiver is active. And receiver name. So this is the name of that spout feed, and this has to be exact, and there's no drop down, no search functionality built into this. You have to know the exact name of that feed. So looking in Arena, I can find that out over here. If I check my spout servers, I can see the name down the bottom here, arena-screen1. So I need to type that in exactly as it is here, back in Unreal, so I know. Screen1. All right, so still nothing to see yet. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to pull that spout feed and then send it to a render target. So I need to create a new render target and I could just do it with the drop down here and stray up the top, create new asset, render target. And it's going to ask me to save it somewhere in my project file. I'll give that a name of uh, arena screen one in case maybe you have multiple screens. And straight away, there's my feed from Resolume here. So if I bring up Resolume now, you can already see it's actually pulling that data in. So you can see that's changing as I turn layers on and off. It'll only update whilst I'm in Unreal. So back in Unreal, you can see that's updating. So I need to test this that works in the scene. So I'll add a blank surface. I will chuck in a plane right in the middle there. And I'll rotate it just to face us. And scale it up a bit so we can see it better. And so now what I need to do is add it as a material to this surface. So that texture, I can create a material or I can just drag it straight on like that and it'll create a new material for me just here by default. And you can see straight away, I've got my feed from Resolume in there. So that's my output window. All right, so that's my feed from Resolume now in Unreal. And that's great, but as you can see, it's my output map and it doesn't look anything like my stage at the moment. So that's when you need to start bringing in UV mapped elements. So right now, this is just using a, a straight UV map. Um, this is not sliced up at all. So I'll delete this out of my project. And there's multiple ways you can bring this in. So in my previous video, I've showed how to map this out in Blender. 
uh, with the UV coordinates. And once you've done that, I export it as FBX and all those elements can now be brought in as an FBX file. So here's my file here. If I just drag that stage FBX straight in, you can see it's doing an import for me. It's going to input all those assets. So there's all my stage elements there. I can drag them straight into the scene. Let's rotate them to view so they're facing the camera. But it's taking all the position data and everything as well from Blender. So everything's kind of laid out as I had it in my Blender project. So with my curves and everything. Right now, this material is still coming from. So I'm going to turn on this. Right now, this material is still coming from this medium aperture, which is what came from Blender. And I just need to swap it over for this arena screen mat here. So I can just drag that straight on. And as you see, as soon as I dump it on, it's updated and it's bringing in that live Resolume data. Now I'm just going to turn off the sky sphere and atmospheric fog. So we've got a nice dark scene because let's be honest, that's where most of you will be VJing. And there's my scene. All right, so now I'll bring up Resolume and we'll see how it goes live over the top. So we're at Resolume. And if you can see here, as I click through, I've now lost the updates in Unreal. And the reason for that is if I click back into Unreal now, you'll see those updates come live. And that's because Unreal is currently just shutting down its usage when it's a background app. So I can turn that off in some settings here. So advanced settings from that viewport window, uh, I'll go to general performance and just this checkbox here, use less CPU in the background. Take that off, we want to run full even when it's in the background. That way I can bring up an arena and I can still run it live with Unreal running in the background there. All right, so that's one way. So that's with our, these pre-built assets I built in uh, Blender. So these are all mapped 3D meshes with a custom UV map to match our scene based on that previous UV mapping video I've done. Uh, but there is an easy way. So that takes a lot of time. If I delete all these assets out and we'll use another plugin and this one, this fantastic plugin also available on the Unreal Marketplace called Slice Importer. And what this does is it will bring slices directly from Resolume into Unreal. So just do a quick slice, slice importer here. This is the plugin uh, it's very cheap for what it is and it'll just pull the, the output map straight from Resolume. So close it off. I'll just make sure we've got that plugin activated. So plugins again, search for slice. There it is, slice importer, enable that. I'm gonna to need to do a restart again and save what I've done. Now what we've got is this slice button up here, import slices. So I'll just turn off all my crazy lighting stuff. And as soon as I click that button, it's gonna to go to Resolume and pull in all my slices. So import slices and there they are. So right now they don't have a material assigned to them. You can see it's material element here. And I just need to get this Resolume one. So I can actually drag it drop here as well, or I can drag it straight into the viewport as I was before. And you can start to see now that they line up, all my slices are there. And I'm dragging the same material, but it's, it knows exactly which part based on the UV map that gets generated from the slice importer. And now it's just a matter of laying out the stage as we want it. Just quickly move all those slices around until they resemble your stage. And that's it. And once again, I have that full control from Resolume coming straight in to those slices. And that's very little work. So once I've done my Apple map, it is straight in here. And then I can just keep building in extra stuff. Um, and benefit is Unreal is very quick and easy to kind of build rough stage layouts. So you can start to add a floor, add a stage. And there's a huge marketplace of other assets you can add in to make it super realistic. You can put your DJ in there, all sorts of things. So we've got an NDI set up here coming in. Um, this is based on the video by Pixel Professor. So if you follow that, that'll get you to set up all your little NDI actors and stuff. There's a bit of blueprint stuff you need to do to get the signal coming in. And once you do, unfortunately, uh, if I was aware, you can't get NDI running in this preview window. It actually has to run in a, the simulation mode here. Uh, so first of all, set up this texture right now. I'll drag that in onto all my surfaces. So that's my NDI texture coming in. Right now it's black. And if I run into play mode, so simulate, give it a second, it'll link up with NDI. And I can see in Resume, my content changing over there. The drawback of NDI being it has to be running in play mode, which is fine. Um, it just means that you can't make changes 
too easily to the scene whilst it's in play mode. So you do need to stop that and it's a bit more to plug it in. But the benefit being you can then run it over a network. So you can run your Unreal previs on a separate machine so you're not using up that GPU power between two applications. And there you have it.